You, me, and HIFMB. Stories of science and the sea. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the HIFMB podcast. Today I had Mita Mahato here. And she's our artist in residence. So she, together with a collaboration with the Hanse Wissenschaftskolleg in Delmenhorst and our HIFMB, we have a fellowship for artists that she applied for and got. And she talks to us about the work she is doing here, the work she had been doing. So something like a poem called Lullaby that she did uh, or comics work. It's a, it's a mix of comics and poetry. And of course, we talk about her life. So... Without further ado, I give you Mita Mahato to be the first artist on our channel. Hello and welcome to the HFMB podcast, everybody. Uh, today we have Mita Mahato from Seattle. Hello. Yes. Hi. <laughs> how are you going? Good. Good. Yeah? How are you? Yeah, excellent. I'm, I'm okay. good. So you're our <laughs> artist in residence. Uh, it says on the, I don't know, on, do you have a door? I wanted to say on the door. No. <laughs> No, I'm floating. Okay, around, all right. So <laughs> I have many doors. <laughs> yeah, so, so on your label it says artist in residence. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that I am here, I mean, kind of very basically, it means that I'm an artist mm -hmm. and I'm working here with the researchers at HIFMB um, on different art projects mm -hmm. um, over the duration of the residency. Yeah. And so part of that involves... Um, developing community programs um, that are using art as a way to think about people's relationships to water and marine biodiversity. Um, so we've been doing a couple of workshops with Machen Treff, um, which is kind of, they, they do after school programs for girls. And then I'll be doing a workshop for school teachers, mm -hmm. primarily in the sciences, but it was kind of a broad call to anybody who wanted to participate that is kind of introducing different artistic strategies to help students uh, approach issues related to climate change mm -hmm. in ways that they may not have before. I think that students today particularly are bombarded with, yeah. um, you know, just the burden <laughs> of, of climate change. Yeah. And, and just to kind of think about, are there artistic processes that might help them think about it in different ways? Mm -hmm. And even if it's just to support their emotional health when it yeah. comes to, to dealing with that stuff. And then I'm also working on my own art project um, based on the kinds of conversations that I've been having while I've been here. Mm -hmm. And that's been really exciting too. So so being an artist in residence means a lot <laughs> of things. You know, sometimes it, it, it can mean just working, but but I think um, on, on an art project, but I think what's been really exciting here is that that work has involved a lot of really interesting conversations with the researchers here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, because you mentioned the time while you've been here. How, how long have you been here? Uh, since January, early January. And and you're leaving us? Uh, in three weeks. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I know, <laughs> right. I know. So, almost four months. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. Have you enjoyed your time so far? So much. Yeah? So much, yeah. <laughs> despite yeah. the weather, despite coming here in winter. I mean, winter. the weather is so similar to Seattle. So, ah, yeah. okay, you right. know, so it didn't, that didn't take that much getting used to. But, of course, it's always like, oh, Where is the sun? And then it's a sunny day and you just spend it sitting in the sun. <laughs> um, but in some ways it's good for work, yeah. you know, because yeah. you, you, you don't get tempted to go outside. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Are you from Seattle? Are you a Seattle law? Uh, Seattleite. Seattleite. Um, okay, right. <laughs> I mean, I've lived there for a long, long time, so it feels like home. But I was originally born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in mm -hmm. the Midwest of the United States. Yeah. My parents immigrated there from India. And so I feel like a Midwesterner at heart, but then we moved to California, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I went to graduate school in Oregon, and then I moved up to Seattle. So right. yeah, I'm I'm not really good with U.S. accents, but is your is your accent typical Seattle <laughs> or, or what is it? It it floats. So okay, sometimes, right. Sometimes sometimes you you hear a little bit of a Midwestern vowel sound coming yeah. out. Like I'll have really long vowels sometimes. Sometimes the California definitely comes through, okay. you know, like I'll start talking kind of like that, that valley girl kind yeah. of <laughs> creeps in. Um, and then sometimes I think Seattle is, is largely like a neutral mm -hmm. accent. Maybe, I don't know if, if, if there's such thing as a neutral accent, but yeah, but yeah. Um, so yeah, my, I think my accent kind of sneaks around here and there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And you mentioned the work that you've been doing from collaboration or from talking to scientists here. Can you talk about it? Or is yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
So I had to apply for this residency, and during the application process, they asked us to submit a proposal for what we would be working on here. Mm -hmm. um, the project that I submitted was on whale fall, which I just suddenly became fascinated with. It's uh, when when a dead whale sinks to the, to the bottom of the ocean floor, and it, it mm -hmm. just develops this incredible ecosystem of its own. And some of the species that have been found on whale fall um, are only found on whale fall. Yeah. And it just became a really interesting way for me to think about uh, marine biodiversity and also to think kind of expansively about things like extinction and evolution, mm -hmm. things about the passage of time, um, things about life and death. So that was the project that I had in mind, yeah. um, but I also wanted to be really open depending on who I would meet here mm -hmm. and what their specialties would be. Yeah. And uh, and so I was kind of looking for what is that in between, yeah. like with this interest in whale fall and then what I'm going to encounter. And one of the things that I, uh, I started kind of thinking about uh, in this project, I'm working with letter forms mm -hmm. and... Uh, and yeah, I started thinking about DNA, yeah. you know, which we use letters to indicate these, yeah. these bases. Mm -hmm. and, and then I was talking to Dr. Silka Lachman, mm -hmm. and, and I showed her one of the pieces that I was working on, and she was like, oh. And, uh, <laughs> and she said, this looks like <laughs> what, um, what color-coded DNA sequencing looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So she showed me an image of that, and so now I've been kind of incorporating DNA sequencing mm -hmm. into the work. Oh, wow. <laughs> and yeah, it's been really challenging because, you know, I'm not a scientist and, yeah, yeah. and so I've had to kind of learn a little bit about as much as, as possible about that whole process. And that's been really fun. But, you know, Zilka has, has talked about, you know, how how much of a pain it can be to, to cross check sequences. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And I've run into that, too, now. It's <laughs> like I'm, <laughs> I'm cutting out these like these letters that yeah. are part of the DNA sequence. And then it's like. Oh no, that's supposed to be an A, not a T. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so so it's been kind of um, a fun challenge to incorporate. Yeah, you that can feel the thinking. pain. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. You mentioned cutouts. That's like one of your main things. Yeah, media. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. It, it also mentioned like the um, what you presented to us in one of our seminars. I think was lullaby. Right. Yeah, and and that is um, is that a poem with with cutouts? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so lullaby, it's, it's about the, um, there's a unique culture of whales that lives in the Puget Sound, mm -hmm. which is this body of water uh, near Seattle where I live. Mm -hmm. And it's the southern resident orcas. And they are considered an endangered species. And lullaby is responding to, this happened a few years ago, uh, one of the mothers lost her calf soon after it was born and was pushing it through the water for about 17 days. I've heard that story, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah until exactly. it was like ba basically bones yeah. that she pushed around. Yeah. Right, right. And so because I've done a lot of work, uh, artistic work on whales, uh, a lot of people were asking, you know, what do you think of the story? What do you think of the yeah. story? And so this lullaby was my response to that. Mm -hmm. And so all of the all of the images that you see are made of cut paper, mm -hmm. and it's actually also cut newsprint. Um, mm -hmm. So even like the solid colors, it's coming from the areas of advertising that are just kind of like pink or just yeah. black. So it's all kind of recycled paper as well. Wow. And is it like when you when you make one of those orcas, is it uh, is it always a cutout orca that is already on the page, or, or do you put it together from? I put it together. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. So I I start out with it kind of works the way that maybe like a, a sewing pattern would work. So I draw out the the image first, mm -hmm. and then on tracing paper, and then I use that on the paper to cut it out. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, so it's all kind of like there there is a drawn version of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes I do freehand. And then and then use that as the basis to cut the paper. Right. Yeah. And okay. Then and then paste it together. <laughs> so you mentioned when you presented this to us that it's the panels largely represent comics. Yeah. And and uh, that's one of your things, isn't it? Like comics poetry. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you write it with a CS and sometimes with an X. What's yeah. the significance there? Yeah. Totally. Yeah, I definitely consider myself a comics artist, even though I think that, like, if you if you look at Lullaby, for instance, mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody would say, "Oh, that's a comic," you know, at first hand <laughs> yeah. glance. But um, at first glance, but I think um, that comics is is a medium that I'm really drawn to because it is all about kind of putting different ways of representing something into conversation with each other. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, I'm really drawn to comics that are not 
associated with kind of like I don't know most people when you think comics you think of superheroes yeah exactly right? yeah I was gonna say that <laughs> exactly exactly so definitely not kind of like the DC Marvel yeah. Spider-Man kind of thing and so um, kind of like the the underground comics of the 1960s 1970s so if you think of like our crumb Harvey Pekar Art Spiegelman mm-hmm. They kind of like refer to comics with the X, mm-hmm. and so there it's it's a way of showing kind of my alignment with that kind of ah. uh, vein of comics that's more about counterculture and yeah. more about cultural critique mm-hmm. um, rather than just kind of like mainstream yeah. narratives. But it's also for me, it's a way to emphasize the the mix part of comics oh, because right. it is about mixing word and image. Um, and for me, collage, so mixing different papers together, different textures, different colors. Right. So it's a way for me to emphasize that. When did you develop this um, comics fascination? Oh, I think, you know, I mean, it goes back to when I was really little. I yeah. think like, you know, as, as kids, we read the funnies, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, it, it started there. And then when I was in college, I got really into um, uh, Neil, Neil Gaiman's uh, Sandman series. But then um, I started teaching comics and, uh, you know, just kind of to introduce in my introduction to literature courses, I would always have kind of a, a, a graphic novel or a graphic memoir uh, to introduce students to these different ways that writers uh, talk about their experiences. And, uh, and I started developing that more and more. And, and then there came a point where I knew the medium so well that I decided to try it myself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then it just exploded from there, yeah. you know? So, so I think, you know, it's been a lifelong fascination, mm-hmm. um, but always kind of, or usually as a reader. And then I started making them and it was like, oh, why haven't I been doing this my whole life? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And do, do you, like um, most of the comics I've seen by you are with these cutouts. Is that always, like, do they always come together when it's a comic, it's a cutout or? Yeah, usually, usually. Okay. I've done a few that are, kind of more heavy on the drawing and, and usually when that's the case it's more kind of comics journalism right okay. um and and that's because you just have to convey so much information yeah and uh and yeah usually what drives uh the imagery it tends to be um the cutout material mm-hmm. yeah yeah and maybe like taking lullaby for instance the mm-hmm. publication process I'm, i'm completely new to this kind of art and yeah. uh, h- how does it work like yeah yeah It really varies. I think it's interesting because in the realm of kind of literary publications Mm -hmm. with journals like uh, So Lullaby is published in in literary journal called Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. And I think that there has been an increasing interest in publishing comics Mm -hmm. and not just kind of straightforward poetry or, or, or prose. And so, and so in many cases, it's just been such an honor that I, I get an invitation mm-hmm. to submit something. And that was the case for Lullaby. All right. And in other cases, yeah, it's more kind of like a standard submission process where it's like, oh, I, I really want to submit to this journal. And so I'll, I'll make something or, or, or um, send in a pitch of something that I could make. Okay. Um, so so it, it kind of varies depending yeah. on the project. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and you also have another piece of work, which is called Alligator Gut, which sparked my interest because it's, um, at first I thought, because somewhere on, on the website it said about lost and disappearing animals, and then I thought, are alligators endangered? And <laughs> uh, But now you actually told me that it's some, something completely different, which I could have guessed from the title. Mm. But yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> let you talk, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so Alligator Gut, um, I got an invitation um, to publish this piece mm-hmm. uh, as well from a, from a different editor, same journal. But the ask was to, the, the specific issue was on the theme of survival. Mm-hmm. And so I started thinking about survival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's kind of like a standard idea one has about survival. And, and it's kind of a very loaded term and an important term for, for a lot of people. Uh, what my mind went to at that time was plastic mm. because this is this is a material that we've created that will probably outlast all of us, yeah. you know. And so I started thinking about that as the uh, the focus. And then I remembered hearing when I was little, I was really into animal documentaries <laughs> when I was little. I, I guess I still am. But I remembered watching a video, a, a documentary where they were talking about how acidic the stomach environment is of, of alligators yeah. and crocodiles and caimans. Yeah. 
and then I was uh, reading all these stories about how, you know, um, their stomach environments are so acidic that they can digest most anything, but plastic bags and things like that are being found mm. whole in, in alligators' guts and in some cases are leading to their deaths. Yeah. And so I wanted to put kind of like those two things in conversation together, this long, long survival of of this species yeah. um, up against this kind of material that we've created. And so that's kind of the basis for for this piece. Mm. And, and it's uh, an erasure, a visual erasure poem. And so what I've done is I've cut out the words from an existing text mm. and left behind just a few words that form the basis of the poem. Um, the original text was a journal article, actually. Oh, okay. Um, and the article was about, um, this is kind of funny, but the article was about the effectiveness of art about environmental causes. Oh, uh, wow, okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was playing with, with that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, le yeah, let's talk about this next because that's yeah. a, major, a major theme I wanted to ask you as well. So, like, the, I've, I've talked about this with our other artist in residence, Garand, and, like, philosophically, I, I find it super helpful now that we have art coming in as a form of outreach and that it's more considered and more considered because it's been largely underestimated, I think, for the climate message, for the plastics message, any environmental message. What do you think about all this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's fascinating. And I think yeah. I think you're yeah. right that, like, one of the many things that I love about here is that you get people from so many different disciplines coming together, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not just kind of like, okay, here's this one group that's going to try to tackle all of these issues, yeah. you know, but like understanding the value of coming in with these different disciplinary perspectives, mm -hmm. um, which also opens up kind of like each of us come from different communities or have different people in mind when we're th thinking about why we care about these issues, Yeah, exactly. you know, so finding those intersections. And I, I do think that art can be a really helpful way to yeah just get a slightly new perspective mm -hmm. on something to see something in ways that you wouldn't have before and also to invite other people who might not feel like they have expertise on something to 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 kind of contribute their perspective mm -hmm. as well so that's something that i'm really interested in as well yeah so yeah i, I definitely think that like it's a super powerful delivery that might resonate or where the message then might resonate with people that otherwise wouldn't have been reached Right. And then all of a sudden they, they always have lullaby at the at the back mm -hmm. of their minds and think about orcas because of that or plastics with alligator gut. Right. And yeah, yeah, super right. helpful. Did you have anything other than the DNA stuff that you mentioned before that you mm -hmm. have coming out of this trip? Oh, yeah, so much. I mean, so I've been meeting biweekly with the governance group here yeah. too, you know, yeah. and that's been really, really fascinating because it feels like, you know, so many of the things that I think about when I'm making art Everybody here is having those same kinds of conversations, but now I'm kind of getting it with a different vocabulary or a different dif disciplinary uh, perspective or a different application. Mm -hmm. And that's helping me to see what I work on in different ways yeah. as well. You know, so it's just been really useful to have that kind of like um, multiple, I don't know, just just these variations yeah, in, in, yeah. in perspective. Yeah, the multiple yeah. disciplines, exactly, and perspectives like yours make such an important puzzle piece in this mm -hmm. that I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why for years it hasn't been considered, <laughs> but, but now I'm super happy that it's here yeah. and, and that you're working with us. Yeah. So thanks for that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but a little bit about you as a, mm -hmm. as a person and your life. Were you always an artist or <laughs> how did all this start for you? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I, again, like when I was little, I would draw all the time you know mm. and I would it's funny again <laughs> to think about this but I had a notebook where on one side of the page I would um, draw an animal yeah. and on the other side of the page I would write a poem about that animal really oh nice. yeah and it but it's funny because then that completely disappeared okay you know for many many years and and it was in college I I thought that I was planning on majoring in creative writing mm -hmm. and then I took a class and and the professor completely just like scared me out of it oh, okay <laughs> And so I went into instead studying studying literature rather than writing it, you know. Oh, okay. And, uh, and so then, you know, I went to graduate school in English literature, but still, you know, was, was kind of interested in, in how work was written. And then 
and then just slowly started developing my own practice. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something interesting when you like know a medium or a form so well, you know all the theories behind it and you yeah. have all of kind of like, oh, this is exactly how this text works that somebody else has done. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so you have kind of like the vocabulary and all of that to, to do it yourself. Yeah. And that's kind of what I decided to do. It's like, okay, why am I complaining about how this person is doing it? Why don't I just do it myself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? yes. <laughs> so that's kind of, kind of what happened for me. Yeah. I just ended up, yeah, starting to make art myself. So v very much self-trained, yeah. you know, but, but also have, have uh, taken workshops and, and, uh, you know, just gotten some minimal formal training, but, but really very much kind of self-trained artists. Yeah. The, the professor, how did they scare you out of it? So, uh, I mean, on the first day of class, he, he came in and said, you know, not all of you will be writers. Mm -hmm. Many of you will be getting some bad grades from me. Um, so very much was like trying to scare us, yeah. you know, to weed us out. I think he even used that word weeding out okay. um, or those words. And, and it just didn't feel like he weeded me out, <laughs> you know, mm. it didn't feel like a nourishing environment. And, and yeah. that was also why when I went into teaching, I wanted to kind of, you know, not be that teacher, yeah, exactly. you know, cause, cause, uh, yeah, not everybody will end up being a writer, but that, that isn't for you to decide on the first day of a class, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So that was in, in your, your first degree in your bachelor's degree in the university of California. Exactly. In San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then you moved from that to Oregon. Exactly. Is for my uh, MA and PhD. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. How long is a PhD in uh, your field? Average six years. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. yeah. I mean, that includes the MA. Yeah. So it was uh, two years of MA and then another four years towards the PhD. MA is Masters of Arts. Ma exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. And what was your thesis or what yeah, did you write about? Yeah. So <laughs> um, it was on the 19th century novel, British novel. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um, I looked... Is it just called British novel? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you, yeah. So I was focusing on... Um, I focused on Jane Austen. Oh, um, oh okay. Right. And, yeah. Right. And, and George Eliot. Um, I had a, a chapter on Stoker mm -hmm. and then a few other things here and there. But my, my focus was actually on... It was called uh, Gothic Pathologies. Okay. And so I was looking at the eruption of the Gothic yeah. in, in these really realist texts mm -hmm. and, and how they were always linked to some form of illness. Okay. That's and, uh, Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, so, yeah, I've always been kind of interested, I guess, in the way that science, um, scientific discourse is instructing narrative discourse. Mm -hmm. And I think that still is working its way in my, through my work, right? Oh, okay, yeah. But um, but the chapter on on Dracula, um, I had a subspecialty in film studies as well, mm -hmm. and so I was also looking at at cinematic representations of vampires, mm -hmm. also. And I think that <laughs> that element, the kind of the the interest in cinema, that's really what stuck with me as I started teaching. And so mm -hmm. when I when I actually kind of went into teaching, a lot of the classes that I taught were rather than being about the British novel, yeah. were were about um, film. <laughs> okay. Did you first start teaching at the, no, not in Oregon? Or, or no, did you, do you, do you have to teach during your PhD? Yeah, I okay. mean, some of us, we had the opportunity to teach okay. um, during graduate work, which, which of course is like really time consuming, but it's nice because then, then you get money to pay the bills, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and the experience too um, mm -hmm. of being in a classroom. So, um, so I started teaching there as a graduate student. Okay. And, and then you moved to Puget Sound again or, or to the University of Puget Sound? Yeah, yeah, I had I had a one year visiting professorship in a very small town in eastern Washington. And then I okay. moved to the University of Puget Sound. OK, after that. yeah. Eastern Washington is then Washington State. Exactly. Uh, yeah. okay, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I'm, I'm always super. I'm, I'm very bad with uh, American states. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, you know, it's like Washington is a state over here and then there's Washington, D.C., which is something totally different. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sympathize. <laughs> OK, thanks. <laughs> Okay, then in, in University of Puget Sound, which we talked about what uh, Lullaby is based on. Right. And and then you became a... Oh, no, oh no you got tenure in 2011? Right. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And then did that for another eight years? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. W was it to your liking that um, you stayed that long? I mean, it's funny. I was <laughs> talking about this with somebody else the other day. You know, I... I love teaching so much I, that that's like one of the things along with like 
art making practice it's like it's it feels like something that's just in me mm -hmm. you know and it's like I feel like I could teach for the rest of my life you yeah know? nice and so and so I think that part of the job was was absolutely to my liking mm -hmm. you know and I felt really passionate about it and all that stuff but you know like you're saying I mean that's that's a long time to mm -hmm. be in one place yeah. um, and that is the way that tenured professorships go and for in, in some ways there's good reason for that but I think also it was kind of around year eight, year nine, where I was kind of like, oh, you know, should I try something else while I'm still young and, can, yeah. you know, can try something else? And so uh, so it was kind of like, you know, it's a big deal to leave a tenured position yeah, um, and uh, not the standard thing. But but I, it also just felt like the right time and. And so, yeah, I, I left. <laughs> yeah. And it says since 2012, you, you are basically self-employed as an, as an artist. So you... uh, 2017 or oh, 20, 2018, I think, is when I, is when I left right. the tenured position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and basically then made art or, or being a self-employed artist your main profession? Or? Yeah. I mean, I, I did have, um, I worked for the last three years um, at, a, at, a, at an art museum doing mm. public programming. So a lot of the things that I did as a professor in terms of developing community programs and working with artists, working with some university students as well. So a lot of similar things. But yeah, the reason why I took that job was to kind of have more alignment with, with my work as an artist. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. And you also became a board chair in that year on or at the short run in Seattle? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, so short run. So this is an organization that I've been with, I think, since 2012, actually. So it's... it's, it's oh, sorry. For, no, it's all right. M maybe I got my notes wrong. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Yeah, so short run is this amazing nonprofit organization in Seattle that focuses on comics mm -hmm. and community programs. And so we run a yearly festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's kind of like become a fixture in Seattle now. Everybody yeah. really looks forward to going. When is it? Uh, it's in usually November. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so we invite artists from all over the world, mm. comics artists, to have their comics, uh, sell their comics um, at the festival. And, uh, and yeah, we have programming around it, too. Uh, we have a comics residency that we run every year that's happening right now, actually. <laughs> we do summer school, summer classes, um, and all kinds of programming and exhibitions around comics through yeah. the year. Yeah. So the summer schools you mentioned, are they similar to the workshop? I know you're running the workshop that you mentioned before for teachers here, for instance. Yeah, Something yeah, similar? yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that a lot of the classes that we have run are designed for people who are, are already doing comics. Mm -hmm. But we do teach classes that are for kind of sometimes younger kids, sometimes for seniors. Yeah, and so it, it really kind of varies. I'm really excited when I go back to kind of continue to do the workshops that I've been doing here that might be for school teachers or, mm -hmm. or specific groups like that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. And yeah, then the the um, this fellowship, so the, the fellowship and residency in arts with Haveka, so the HWK, the... Yeah. Uh, Hans Wissenschaftskolleg. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hans Wissenschaftskolleg. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that came up. And why did you why did you pick this one? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> so so a friend of mine shared um, there was a there was a call for artists for this Art Waves residency. And she shared it with me, knowing that I have a really deep interest with with marine mm -hmm. um, ecosystems. And I saw it and I was like, oh, my gosh, yeah, I have to apply for this. <laughs> um, so and so when I saw that, it just it just made sense for me. And I've been working for the last, oh, gosh, five years on a book project that came out of a different residency. Mm -hmm. um, and that project is largely finished now. And so it seemed like the perfect time to come here and kind of think about okay what's next for me yeah you know and so and really it's like the the project that I'm working on 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 DNA I have like a small piece that will be finished at the end of this month but mm -hmm. I really kind of look at that project as something that will be long term yeah. you know so there's a small piece of it but I f it, that feels like just the beginning so um so yeah this this uh residency was just like it's one of those things that this was made for me so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what sparked your interest in, in oceans to begin with? Is it the, the vicinity in, in Seattle or? 
I think that's part of it. You know, I get asked that question and I, I just, I don't know what the answer is because <laughs> it just feels like almost innate. I mean, I, when, when I lived in Wisconsin, we grew up near a lake, mm-hmm. Lake Michigan, one of the Great Lakes. And, and then, you know, in California, it was a close to an ocean too, but But, like, I don't know if there is, like, a a specific reason other than just feeling very drawn to it. Mm -hmm. That being said, like, I'm also drawn to, like, forested environments, too, (laughs) you know? So, so it's, it's not limited to the ocean. Exactly, yeah. But definitely there's, there's something there where I just, I, and, and part of it might be just that, you know, like, like with lullaby, it's just, it's just an interesting challenge to kind of think about an environment where we don't have the same kind of foothold that we might feel like we have on land. Mm. There's something about being shaken up yeah. and and like, how do I navigate here and yeah. being outside of your comfort zone? So that might be part of it too. Yeah. yeah. And with the DNA project, where will you publish this and where can we see it? So this, this first part of it, I was invited to submit to this really incredible literary journal called Ecotone. Mm-hmm. And they focus on um, like place is is what they uh kind of have in their their boilerplate (laughs) explanation of who they are but (laughs) but they're really doing wonderful work on spreading the word about the environment and and environmental justice issues um and so i was really honored when i got kind of like will you submit and i was like yes i'm working on this project actually and so so that should be out i think sometime in june wonderful yeah Will it be online and, and open access or? Yeah, for, I think it's like for the first two weeks that, that the publication is out, it's available to everybody. Okay. So, so yeah, we'll Excellent. be sure to spread the word oh, when definitely. it comes out. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, we, we will too on the, on the podcast, on yeah. Twitter or something. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and with that, I, I just wanted to ask what's next for you. So where will you go? Will you, will you go back to, to Seattle or what's? Yeah, so um, I'll return home to Seattle to my partner and my, my old cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, um, in June, actually, I have a, another very like, much shorter residency, mm-hmm. um, just a two-week residency. But this one is the kind of residency where you just kind of put your head down and, and work. Um, in Alaska. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'll be in a little cabin in Alaska. Oh, shit. And the reason I'm really excited about this residency, the second residency now, is it'll give me time to yeah. process everything that I've been learning here. Yeah, great. And to map out this larger whale fall project that I, I have in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so that's still happening for you? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, nice. Exactly. Okay, good. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm picturing something really expansive. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I'm nice. excited. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but, same. Um, but yeah, and then, yeah, just continuing to work on this project and a few others um, and seeing what's next. Hopefully, I'll come back and see the new building when it's, yeah. <laughs> it's open. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> totally. I wish you best of luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. So with that, we are done with my questions. Is there anything that you uh, want to highlight or that you want to mention that we haven't talked about? Oh. Um, gosh. Just if anything comes to mind. Yeah. It doesn't no. need to. No. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Okay, cool. I mean, there probably is, but... but uh, no, if it comes up, we'll, we'll okay. talk later again. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much, Mita. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> See you around. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye, everyone. Want to dive deeper? Surf over to hifmb.de or follow us on Twitter at hifmb underscore ol.